Lawyers and others at ADF Alliance Defending Freedom created a video offering plain facts on specifically chemical abortion. YouTube engaged in censorship with warnings that 16 states' attorneys general now say are inconsistent with First Amendment liberties. The YouTube warning further inserts patently false statements, this array of attorneys say, about the safety of chemical abortion. Calling YouTube bias illegal, the AGs ominously add, it must stop. This is Life News Radio. Persecution around the world has manifested itself through the centuries, but it is worse today than ever before. Aid to the Church in Need and its donors have been there to help since 1947, never abandoning the church or her most vulnerable children. Will you stand up for your faith and accompany our brothers and sisters on their spiritual journey? Visit churchinneed.org. A report from Live Action details crimes by abortion providers covering up sexual abuse of minors. It parallels Live Action video showing Planned Parenthood employees bragging about illegal smuggling of teens out of state for abortions to avoid laws requiring parental involvement. And as President Biden works to compel hospital emergency rooms to do abortions, his State of the Union address will include promoting unlimited abortion. For pro-life headlines delivered to your email address daily, sign up at lifenews.com. This has been Life News Radio. The Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network presents Saints and Seasons. On March 7th, we celebrate the feast of St. Thomas Aquinas, confessor and doctor of the church. The angelic doctor, also known as the universal doctor, was born the son of the Count of Aquino in the Kingdom of Sicily around the year 1225. He was educated first by the Benedictines at Monte Cassino, then at the University of Naples. Thomas took the Dominican habit in his late teens, but his family disapproved and took him captive back to their estate where they tried to dissuade him. At one point, his brothers paid a prostitute to seduce Thomas, but the saint drove her away with a flaming log and from then on was blessed with perfect chastity. Finally, Thomas was allowed to escape and fulfill his vocation. His prayers and piety would sanctify the rest of his family, including his repentant brothers. He studied under St. Albert the Great, and though his humble silence earned him the nickname the Dumb Ox from his fellow students, Thomas went on to establish the preeminent school of thought for the Catholic Church through works like the Summa Theologica. He also composed the Mass and Office of the Feast of Corpus Christi, including the great hymn, Pange Lingua Gloriosi Corporis Mysterium. Thomas died on March 7th in the year of our Lord, 1274, and is also celebrated on January 28th in the modern calendar. Also honored on this day are Saints Perpetua and Felicitas, St. Paul the Simple, and many other martyrs, confessors, and holy virgins. For more about the saints and seasons of the Catholic Church, visit thestationofthecross.com forward slash saints and seasons. When you talk to people who were locked in sin, and you can't convince them to leave their sin, it's because they don't have any fear of hell. They fear God, they don't want to offend Him, but nobody talks about the fact that hell's real or that it endures forever. So you stand before the truth of God and you're illuminated completely in His truth. All you see is all the filthiness, the wretchedness, how vile you are and how you hate Him. You hate the one that you stand in front of. So what if He tries to give you a hug? You hate Him, you won't accept it. What if He says, please come in? I hate you. I would never come in there. This is how horrible it is. This is this is what has to be meditated on. To die in a state of sin means that you hate God. Whether you feel like you hate God or you don't, it doesn't matter. Not having the grace of God means you hate Him. That's Sermons for Everyday Living from 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern on the Station of the Cross. Joe McLean, and you're listening to the Station of the Cross, proclaiming the fullness of the truth with clarity and charity. Heard around the world on your Android and Apple mobile devices. Go into the world and tell every man that you meet there is a man on the cross. A Catholic take. What you need to know right now. A bold synthesis of inspiration and information. 
keeping you up to date on the news and issues from a courageous Catholic perspective. A Catholic Take with Joe McLean starts now. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and it's great to be on with you. Coming from a secret bunker in the Shenandoah Valley, uh, just got to go to a, a wonderful press conference yesterday. I say wonderful only because of the people involved, the Ponto Institute, the Population Research Institute, a great people doing fantastic work, They're doing the kind of work that nobody else seems to want to do these days, and that's hold these organizations accountable. And specifically, I'm referring to the Catholic Relief Services. I mean, the report that they put out yesterday, which, by the way, we're linking to the full coverage. We live streamed the entire press conference that showed the receipts on what Catholic Relief Services has been up to and why they've just basically, you know, they they like that government funding. They like that government funding so much that they're willing to sell themselves down the river when it comes to abortion, contraception, uh, sexual perversities, and all other kinds of immorality. The details are in going to be in the show notes today, so make sure to check that out at the stationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. I interviewed uh, Stephen Mosier, Michael Hitchborn, and others. I'm going to be bringing that content to you very, very soon. But today we're talking about conspiracies, plots, and secret societies it's going to be a good conversation today. Brent Haynes is on the team. He's going to be talking about the Biden administration basically admitting the conspiracy theory that they were flying people over that border because why let them just cross over, you know, on feet when they can be flown over at taxpayer expense? Well, turns out that's true. That conspiracy turns out to be true. In fact, we're going to be covering that story with Brent Haynes at 14 past the hour. And then Professor Roberto De Matteo is on the team. He wrote a book called The Paths of Evil, Conspiracies, Plots, and Secret Societies with Sophia Institute Press. In fact, we're going to be linking to that book today. If you go to sophiainstitute.com, we'll put a link to it in the show notes as well. But we're going to have a conversation about these paths of evil, conspiracies, plots, and secret societies, especially given in light of the fact that the Vatican most recently met with the Freemasons. We talked about that with Father Gerald Murray last week. We're going to have a conversation about that with Professor Roberto DiMatteo coming up at 30 past the hour. As I said, everything we cover is going to be in the show notes over at thestationofthecross.com forward slash A-C-T. But we have a lot to get to. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and now your saint of the day. Saint Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. The angelic doctor, also known as the universal doctor, was born the son of the Count of Aquino in the kingdom of Sicily around the year 1225. He displayed a philosophical mind from a young age and was educated first by the Benedictines at Monte Cassino, then at the University of Naples. In Naples, Thomas took the Dominican habit in his late teens but his family disapproved and actually took him captive back to their estate where they tried to dissuade him. The tears and begging of his mother and sisters were to no avail, and at one point his brothers stooped so low as to pay a prostitute to seduce Thomas in the hopes that such a sin would ruin his resolve. Instead, the horrified saint drove the woman away with a flaming log, and from then on he was blessed with perfect chastity. Finally, Thomas was allowed to escape and fulfill his vocation to end the embarrassing situation. His prayers and piety would go on to sanctify the rest of his family, including his repentant brothers. Thomas studied under St. Albert the Great, and though his humble silence earned him the nickname the Dumb Ox from his fellow students, his intellectual bellow would soon echo through the world, as his master Albert predicted. Thomas went on to establish the preeminent school of thought for the Catholic Church through works like the Summa Theologica, though this masterpiece in particular remained unfinished after Thomas received a great vision of Jesus Christ compared to which all the scholars' incredible earthly works, he said, were like mere straw. Thomas was deeply devoted to the Blessed Sacrament and composed the Mass and Office of the Feast of Corpus Christi, including the great hymn, Pange Lingua Gloriosi Corporis Mysterium, which is also sung on Holy Thursday. Thomas died on March 7th in the year of our Lord, 1274. 
and is also celebrated on January 28th in the modern calendar. For more about this day and others in the church's calendar, visit thestationofthecross.com slash saints and seasons. St. Thomas now, Aquinas, pray for us. And now your headline news. Sorry about that, Jake. A Breitbart reports Nikki Haley drops out of Republican primary race. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley formally suspended her presidential campaign yesterday following her string of losses on Super Tuesday. Haley fell short of endorsing former President Donald Trump after spending weeks on the campaign trail attacking him. But she admitted, quote, in all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convenes in July. I congratulate him and wish him well, close quote. The Hill reports a Russian missile nearly hit Zelensky's motorcade. A Russian missile struck near Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's motorcade Wednesday in the city of Odessa. The missile hit about 490 feet from the motorcade, which was also uh, had uh, the Greek prime minister in it. That's not fun. Greek and Ukrainian officials continued on their way after the missile strike and held a meeting in the southern Ukrainian city on the Black Sea. And Catholic Vote reports New York sending National Guard to police subway. Democratic New York Governor Kathy Hochul announced Wednesday that her administration is sending the New York State Police and National Guard to monitor the Big Apple's crime-plagued subway system. The news comes after Democratic New York City Mayor Eric Adams decried migrant crime and called for changes to the city's sanctuary status. And those, those are your headline news. The gospel today comes to us from Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 39. In fact, I'm taking, I'm taking the option today. It's a good option. You're going to love it. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be those of his own household. And he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake We'll find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know, I know, you, maybe you, I know I have. I, maybe you have as well, but how many times in our life have we had to make the tough decision? Hmm, blood relatives or the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? It's, a, it's not even a question anymore, is it? You have to choose. You have to choose. I choose Christ. I choose Christ over all things. Let the chips fall where they may. Haydock's commentary says, Dissension and war, in order that the false peace of sinners may be destroyed, and that those who follow me may differ in morals and affections from the followers of this world. You got to be different. You can't smell like, act like, taste like, and all the rest like the, this world, the flesh, and the devil. You have to be set apart. You have to be consecrated unto him. Set apart for what? For converting the world, to save the world, out of charity and love for the world. You got to meet the world where they're at, but you got to help them get where they got to go. It goes on, the sword, therefore, is the gospel, which separates those parents who remain in fidelity. It must be observed that the gospel does not necessarily of itself produce dissensions amongst men, but that Christ foresaw from the depravity of man's heart the dissensions would follow the, uh, the propagation of the gospel. The blame of this, however, does not attach to the gospel itself, since those who embrace it after their conversion sought more than ever to keep peace with all men, even with their most bitter pro uh, persecutors, whilst those who reject the gospel, forgetting even the ties of kindred, persecuted even to death the followers of Christ. St. Jerome would say, for in the matter of belief in Christ, the whole world was divided against itself. Each house had its believers and its unbelievers. And therefore was this holy war sent that an unholy peace might be broken through. Hadock goes on to say, not that this was the end or design of the coming of our Savior, but that his coming 
and his doctrine would have this effect. By reason of the obstinate resistance that many would make, and of their persecuting all such as should adhere to him. St. Austin says, There are two kinds of crosses which our Savior here commands us to take up, one corporal and the other spiritual. By the former he commands us to restrain the unruly appetites of the touch, taste, and sight. By the other, which is far more worthy of our notice, he teaches us to govern the affections of the mind and restrain all its irregular motions by humility, tranquility, modesty, peace, etc. Precious indeed in the sight of God and glorious is that cross which governs and brings under the proper rule the lawless passions of the mind. Close quote. St. Austin, pray for us. Where are you at in your decision making? Have you made that decision for Christ above all and everything else? Are you prepared to take up your cross today and to die along next to him on Calvary? Because that is the mission and call of every disciple. So it's a tough decision because we hold on to this world with everything we got. We just want a good life. We want blue skies and sunshine. We don't want to hang out in Shenandoah Valley with clouds out. We can't see the Blue Ridge Mountains. But nonetheless, let God's holy will be done in all things. Accept it as though it comes from his hand. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. The month of March is dedicated to St. Joseph. Oh, St. Joseph, whose protection is so great, so prompt, so strong before the throne of God. I place in you all my interests and desires. O St. Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O oh, St. Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. St. Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Amen. The Station of the Cross began broadcasting in Buffalo, New York in 1999. Since then, our listening areas have multiplied and expanded into several states. While our mission is to grow the Catholic faith through radio and other media outlets, our apostolate is supportive of but independent from your local diocese. Through your generosity, we are able to inspire countless listeners with the gospel and help lead them to a parish to be spiritually nourished by the sacraments. The Station of the Cross has many ways to keep you informed about our programming. You can view the highlights of our primetime programming schedule or the full 24-7 programming grid at both thestationofthecross.com or the free iCatholic Radio app. Just search under the Programming tab. Our website also offers a printable version for your convenience. Jesus Christ, welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. It is great to be on with you. Praise be to God. Coming up at 30 past the hour, we're going to have a conversation with Professor Roberto DiMattei. He's the author of a book. He's the author of like 30 some odd books, but The Paths of Evil, Conspiracies, Plots, and Secret Societies is one of his books, and it's published by SophiaInstitute.com. That's SophiaInstitute.com. We're going to put a link to it in the show notes over at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. We're going to have a conversation about conspiracies, plots, and secret societies, especially given in light of our most recent dialogue with the Freemasons. We talked about that with Father Gerald Murray, but we're going to have a conversation with Professor Roberto DiMatteo coming up at 30 past the hour. Do join us if you can. Lots of stories in the news that are of great concern to us, and no doubt they are to you as well. For instance, here's a conspiracy that uh, seems to be true. The Biden administration admits to flying 320,000 migrants secretly into the United States to reduce the number of crossings at the border 
as a national security vulnerabilities. I mean, a wall might have also done that, but hey, so can first class tickets on an airplane. He joins us now, Brent Ains, our friend, friend of the show, Catholic attorney and freedom fighter. Good morning to you, Brent. Thanks for being on the team. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, this wow, is a, what a story. Relatively, this is, it's quite a story. Um, thanks to a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit by an organization called the uh, Center for Immigration Studies, uh, the uh, government has been discovered to actually be just flying people illegally. They're not following, you know, the immigration law. The federal government is actually flying people into the United States from other countries. And the only thing these people had to do to qualify was to use the app created by the Biden administration. Wow. So they used this app. They then got a free flight to the United States. And then they were released in the United States. They, you know, the legal term, of course, is they were paroled for two years to basically uh, do whatever they want in the United States. So you can't make this stuff up. You know, we've seen those of us who pay attention to the news. We've, seen, you know, we've seen the video of people just swarming across the border, and now the Biden administration uh, has been discovered to be flying these people into the United States. It, you know, it's. It's an extraordinary story. I mean, Joe, the only other way the government, the Biden administration, could make it easier for people to immigrate to the United States would be as, as if they went door to door in foreign countries and said, would you like a free flight to the United States? Um, That's bizarre. I, uh, it really shows you that and other actions. It really shows you the depth and breadth to which this administration will go and the woke advocates who support these policies and enact these policies it shows you how far they are willing to go to simply bring anybody and everybody into the united states i remember back in the uh, obama administration all of the talk about the north american trade agreement and open borders and all of this i mean it seems like the biden administration is getting done what the obama administration only dreamed of which is open borders wall or no wall national guard in texas or no it doesn't matter they're finding ways to to get around every single obstacle pun intended and allow anybody and everybody to come across the border. And they're going to go so far as to put them on airplanes and fly them there if it becomes that, that difficult to do. Why in the world, Brent, would they, would they want such uncontrolled um, migration, ma mass migration to come across that border? What, what, what purpose does this serve? New York Governor Kathy Hochul is having to send uh, armed troops into the subway systems because the crime is so bad there. Things aren't looking good for our country. One word, Joe, voters. And people might think a conspiracy theory, you know, they might, they might think that that's just unduly uh, pessimistic or cynical, but that really is the answer. The Democrat Party sees these people as future voters. They will come into the United States and there will be tremendous pressure at some point to simply grant them amnesty. Those of us who are old enough to remember what happened in the 1980s, remember that there was tremendous pressure which in retrospect just seems almost laughable compared to what we're dealing with now. But in the 1980s, uh, the immigration issue became such a large issue, such an important issue and such a contested issue that Ronald Reagan they passed legislation in the 1980s that Ronald Reagan, who was president of the United States at the time, signed an amnesty bill. He signed it into law. And the idea was that, you know, they would fix the border, they would fix the immigration system, and that this would be a one-time amnesty. Well, obviously it wasn't. You know, fast forward approximately 40 years, and we have millions and millions of immigrants here illegally. They haven't gone through the, pro the, the process. They're now literally being not just shown the door into the country at the border. They're literally being flown in at taxpayer expense. And the only rationale for it is that the Democrat Party wants to have voters. And in case people really think this is too cynical of you, here's something that's not discussed very often. And the complexities in the way it will play, our, play out aren't exactly clear. But remember, we apportion the United States Congress uh, every 10 years. We apportion the House of Representatives, to be more precise, because every state gets two senators. Joe, 
non-legal or illegal immigrants are counted in the United States Census when we apportion of members of the House of Representatives. And that had always been the case. And finally, under uh, Trump, they tried to stop it. There was a case that went all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled, no, you have to count people because the census basically says count inhabitants, and they are inhabitants. So it's, it's really hard for anybody who, does, who supports this, these open-door policies to deny that that is the effect of them, even if they want to deny that that is the purpose. But really, when you look at the, the different actions that a lot of politicians do, and it's not just Democrats, you know, often it's Republicans too, but this issue is uh, almost overwhelmingly on the, on, supported by, by the one political party over the other. When you look at what they do to maintain power, when you look at what they do to obtain power, when you look at how they exercise power, the ultimate answer is they want to bring these people in the United States because they want, at least from the politicians' point of view, they want to expand their voter base. Now, you also but wouldn't you the, say the, though, Brent? Let me let me just jump in real quick because wouldn't you say that? Uh, to that point, that more and more people on the other side of the political aisle are basically getting fed up. I think we're seeing pushback across uh, across the the divide here, across the aisle. I mean, we're seeing people who are staunchly Democrat come out publicly and say, "This is ridiculous. This must stop. We must do something. Build the wall. You know, let's enforce uh, our our laws on the border. Let's do this in a more rational way." So I'm I guess I'm surprised, but I guess my big question is. Are, is this this agenda that we're seeing played out here, is this going to push our country to a breaking point? Are we going to see well, this go too far? And the citizenry, I mean, we've already seen what, what happens in 2022 and, and, the, and the riots across this country. Could you see a day where we get to that kind of, of that level of, uh, of uh, we're done with this? Well, first, the, the first effect is going to be, aside from whether or not these people are allowed to vote or whether they're granted asylum, the first uh, effect to consider is the economic effect. Only one of two things can happen. Either this massive number of immigrants obtain jobs, which is good for them, and it's good that they're providing for themselves when they obtain jobs, but that drives down wages for other people. You know, people in Alabama, people in you know West Virginia, people in Arkansas, people in Oklahoma, people in Iowa who are looking for jobs now have to compete with, with illegal immigrants. And the greater the supply, the more the employer can lower wages, the less they have to pay. That's just basic supply and demand. An increase in immigrants causes the wages to go lower. Now you'll hear, and this is just a complete fraud, you will hear people say, well, immigrants do jobs Americans don't wanna do. That is absolutely false. What happens is immigrants will do jobs at lower wages than Americans would do those jobs for. But the, and the, the jobs would be done by the Americans and they would earn more and employers would have to pay more except for the fact that they now have the immigrant who comes over and says, sure, I'll do that at a cheaper rate. So the, you know, that's the first thing is the effect on jobs. Now, J Joe, what happens if they, if they don't get jobs? What happens if they don't work? Well, we are a humane society. We don't just let people starve. You know, despite the numbers of people you see in many large cities who are homeless, those people overwhelmingly suffer from addiction problems or mental health problems. That's a completely separate conversation. But immigrants who don't get jobs and drive down wages on the one side of the scale, what are they going to do? They're going to get welfare. They will uh, eventually qualify for Social Security. They, they will obtain other government benefits. Who pays for those benefits, Joe? the taxpayers. So they're either driving down wages on the one hand or they're driving up the tax burden on the other. And you know that's a little uh, simplistic way to look at it, but ultimately, overall, that is the net effect. It's one of those two. As for the larger cultural uh, changes, the pre President Biden himself has bragged about how the United States will become, you know, less than 50 percent white, how we will become a majority minority country. And he said in his way, the way that Biden does, he goes, and that's a good thing. Well, you know, why? Why are the advocates for unlimited immigration, why are they so insistent on bringing in people who don't 
come from cultures that share the traditional Western civilization values. Why? Because these people despise those values. How do we know that? Because all you have to do is look at the policies and the ideas that they teach children in the schools. All you have to do is think of all the other issues that you and I have talked about many times on this program. You know, they're not flying in Ill, um, illegal immigrants from Ireland or France or England or Spain or Italy. They're not doing that. They're not bringing them in from Poland, for gosh sakes. We wouldn't want any practicing Catholics coming into the United States. No, they're bringing them in from other countries um, According to this report, they're cut, these are flights um, almost entirely from Central and South America. But it just shows you how far they will go. Uh, another news item that just came out last month, Joe, is that in San Francisco, a non-citizen, someone who's not even legal to vote, a non-citizen was put on the San Francisco Election Commission by the San Francisco government. Of course. Think about yeah, I reported the story. Uh, Right, a non-citizen was put on the election commission. So uh, there are jurisdictions who have tried to grant voting rights in certain elections, such as local elections, to people who are not United States citizens. And there are other consequences that are bad for the immigrants themselves. There's now a report out, and this, by the way, goes back decades. This has been known. You, people can go on the Internet and search for this. But there are Chinese criminal gangs that simply smuggle human beings. And it is horrible for these people. You know, they will lie to them. They will promise them. They bring them to the United States, and they end up working in brothels. They end up working in uh, drug, you know, drug wow. labs. And the Chinese gangs are working to bring people in the United States. You know, this is a serious, large problem. But Joe, come November, most of the Democrats who are complaining about immigration are going to come home politically, and they're going to vote for the party that supports open immigration. Yeah. Yeah, and we're going to get what we deserve in the end, high crime and all the rest. Uh, the Lake and Riley story is just the beginning of it all. And this isn't good for those immigrants that are coming across that border either. So let's not forget that we are a people of compassion and mercy. But this is not merciful. This is disordered and chaotic, and that is not how this should be done. Brent Haynes, thank you for your input on that. We'll be right back. We have Professor Roberto DiMatteo on the team. We're going to be talking about conspiracy theories, plots, and secret societies. All that and more is coming next. Don't go anywhere. This is Steve Gleason with your one-minute tool for Catholic evangelism. Here's the question for your non-Catholic friend. Could there be just one word that truly sets the Catholic Church apart from all other churches? Yes, there is. Well, here's your three best friendship tools for Catholic evangelism. That word is retain. How can one word bring such distinction? Well, understanding that retain means to hold back or to keep. Jesus tells the apostles, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Secondly, so what does that world say about sin? The therapist says, forgive yourself. New Agers say it's just a state of mind. And the Evangelical says, just tell Jesus no matter how grave the sin, he'll forgive you directly. And finally, the word retain. We all know that non-Catholics don't go to a pastor to confess grave sins. Why? Because in Protestant thinking, you get to leapfrog humans and go directly to Jesus. And guys, let's don't hide under the newest term, be accountable. Hey, we all will be accountable up to the point that it hurts. Is it embarrassing or is criminal? My priest can say, Steve, your sin's not forgiven. Does your pastor? I think not. Why? Have you ever heard backlash, decreasing church attendance, and loss of revenue? new ask a priest live weekdays at 6 p.m eastern on the station of the cross we'll bring you a different priest each weekday where you can participate in a live q a on the topics that matter to get your question in for father call 1-877-511-5483 while the show is live email us anytime at priests at the station of the cross.com or visit our show page at the station of the cross.com slash ask a priest Download the app to take our programming with you wherever you go. Hear what listeners are saying about the regularly updated iCatholic Radio app. The programs on iCatholic Radio are uplifting, educational, and have served to deepen my faith as a Catholic. Thank you for this amazing station. Download the free iCatholic Radio app in your Android or Apple store today. If you already have the app, please consider giving us a five-star review or telling a friend about it. Be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and here, here are your headline news. 
The National Catholic Register reports Orthodox and Catholic prelates in Russia sharply criticize fiducia supplicans. In a March 1st statement following a two-day plenary assembly in southern Russia, the Conference of Catholic Bishops of Russia stressed that, quote, in order to avoid temptation and confusion, close quote, they wish to draw attention to the fact that blessings of any kind of couples who persist in morally irregular relationships from a Christian perspective, cohabitation, remarriage, or of same sex, are unacceptable. The bishops underscored that despite the confusion following the release of the document, Fiducia Supplicans, Catholic teaching on family and marriage remains unchanged, and that the church blesses and surrounds marital unions and families with pastoral care. LifeSite News reports, conservatives win Ontario by election by widest margin in 20 years. Conservative candidate Jamil Javani has won the Durham, Ontario by-election with 57% of the vote, with the second-place Liberal candidate Robert Rock garnering just 22.5% of the vote. Javani's victory is the largest the Conservatives have had in the riding electoral district in 20 years and presents a 11% increase compared to 2021. The Durham by-election comes after months of polling, which predicted a massive conservative victory in the fall and the forthcoming fall 2025 federal election. Similarly, February research projects that if the election were called right now, conservatives would form a majority government, capturing 194 of 338 seats, leaving the liberals in second place with just 76 seats. Boy, for Canada's sake, I pray that is in fact true. And Catholic News Agency reports John Paul II Shrine considering whether to remove mosaics by Father Rupnik. In light of several serious accusations of abuse against Catholic artist Father Marco Rupnik, the Knights of Columbus told the CNA that they are carefully considering the best course of action, considering the priest's mosaic that adorned the JP2 National Shrine in Washington, D.C. Calls to remove the priest's artwork from places of worship have been mounting around the world, yet extensive Rupnik artwork in the John Paul II Shrine remains in place. Well, dear Knights of Columbus, let me make this easy for you spend all the money you have to remove his artwork because it must be gone. And when you're done, go to San Giovanni Rotondo and remove it from St. Padre Pio Shrine as well because it's horrible. And those those are your headline news. St. Padre Pio, pray for us. Hey, uh, there is a great book out by Sophia Zitu Press. And uh, it's, uh, it's by Professor Roberto Di Mattei. It's The Paths of Evil, Conspiracies, Plots, and Secret Societies. We're going to link to it. SophiaInstitute.com is their website, SophiaInstitute.com. But Professor Roberto Di Mattei, he is joining us now. He is the author of, of many books, actually. He's also the president of Lepanto Foundation and the editor of the magazine, Radici Cristiani. He joins us. Good morning to you, Professor Roberto Di Mattei. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful for your time today. Uh, I, I was uh, fascinated with your book in particular. Um, I want to talk about conspiracies, plots, uh, secret societies, Gnostic sects of all kind, because we seem, especially in our modern time, but you point out in your book, because it's really a history book, that there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, conspiracies have gone all the way back to the Garden of Eden and uh, the, the age of revolution, the bloody age of revolution that is upon us. Uh, seems to be uh, full of these conspiracies, these secret societies. But I also saw that you have an article out uh, over at Rorate Chaley, uh on the Freemason dialogue that the Vatican just held. And I thought, how apropos, we must get you on the team. So I wanted to talk to you about that. Let me start with the book first and ask you the question, why, why are we so given over to conspiracy theories? Um, I think that uh, about all uh, it is important to uh, understand uh, um, whether uh, socio -psycho psychological criteria are enough to formulate a conspiracy uh, theo theory because uh, uh, one of the problems today is, it is uh, the fact that uh, there are not uh, right criteria to approach uh, the, the, the important, the very important question of the conspiracy theory. Uh, so in my view, conspiracy theories uh, are philosophies of history, 
which cannot be understood in a purely um, psychological, political, or, or sociological perspective, uh, reducing uh, reality to the mere factual uh, plane. Of course, uh, the 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 the, um, uh, the social sciences like uh, sociology and uh, other social sciences can. Uh, contribute to understanding uh, historical uh, events but, because uh, every human action has psychological or sociological uh, uh, roots. But when um, the, the psychological and uh, sociological theories presume uh, to offer the, the final explanation of uh, reality, and they fall into reductionism, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, most widespread uh, uh, errors of our age. Um, and so I, I think that a historian, I, I am an historian, uh, cannot uh, proceed without having a philosophy of history. Mm. And is of a Catholic historian, as I am, a, a theology of history. So I agree with uh, the philosopher of history, um, Juan Donoso Cortes, uh, who wisely remarked, uh, remarked that uh, every uh, political and uh, social truth has as its foundation a, a theological truth, because uh, theology is the science that embraces uh, every social science. And uh, according to the Catholic theology, God creates, preserves, and directs all things to their appropriate end. Mm. But, uh, uh, but uh, the, the problem it is that the conspiracies and the secret societies exist uh, because man, bounded uh, uh, by original sin, is inclined to evil, and, uh, um, and his uh, social nature uh, leads him to unite with other men and carry out evil plans. Mm. You say in the book, we might ask the question at this point, considering the existence of a variety of secret societies, this is from your second chapter, and occult forces that run throughout history, is it possible to speak of one great conspiracy to which the individual plots and conspiracies, or at least some of them, can be attributed? I kind of got the sense that it's the it, it kind of boils down to the Catholic Church and in the world of flesh and the devil in complete opposition. And you even quote Professor uh, uh, Plenio, uh, who talks about you know the the age of the revolutionaries, uh, the re the constant yeah. revolutionaries throughout history. So is can we just boil all of the conspiracies, the plots, the the secret societies, the secret gnostics? Can we boil this down to uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil against the Catholic Church? Uh, yes, I, uh, of course, I I think I think so, and. Uh, uh, and uh, in, you, you have um, quoted um, Professor Plinio Correa de Oliveira, his uh, uh, work um, about um, um, the revolution and the counter-revolution. So the history of the revolution is very important. And of course, uh, uh, during this history of revolutions, a, a, a crucial, very dec decisive moment is the French Revolution because the epoch which opened with the French Revolution um, is, uh, uh, is very important for the role of the, the, uh, of, the role of uh, Freemasonry in the French Revolution, a role which was demonstrated by many scholars. Mm. Um, the French Revolution was the result of, of the convergence of, of different interests uh, and objectives uh, against the backdrop of the profound transformation uh, transformation of ideas and the traditions of the 18th uh, century. But the destruction of throne and uh, altar in France and uh, in Europe was a secret objective um, of the free, free, free masonry, and not only 
from uh, by the Freemasonry, free but uh, uh, also uh, it was uh, the, the the objective of a secret society that had uh, developed within the Freemasonry. I speak um, about the Bavarian Illuminati, or more precisely, mm. the Order mm. of the Illuminati, founded in uh, 1776 by um, Adam Weishaupt in, in Bayern, and um, connected to the uh, Bavarian Illuminati. Uh, there were, uh, for example, the um, uh, ultra Jacobin ex um, exponents of the French Revolution. Um, I remember in my, bo my book the name of uh, uh, Babeuf, a, a fanatical uh, disciple of uh, Robespierre, and uh, and uh, his follower Filippo Buon Buonarroti. Uh, Babeuf uh, attempted a, a, an insurrection in France, known as the conspiracy of the equals. Um, which, um, with which he sought to overthrow the, 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 uh, the directory and uh, reintroduce the, the Jacobinism in France, but failed. Mm. Uh, and um, his follower, Bonarotti, founded the perfect uh, sublime masters uh, um, around uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, beginning of the 19th century, and uh, the, this uh, secret society, the Perfect uh, Masters, was a secret uh, a secret revolutionary society, which um, drew on uh, the program of the of the, the Illuminati. I remember in my book that uh, um, uh, James Billington, who is a, a history professor uh, at Harvard and Princeton, in a, in a very interesting book uh, um, titled uh, Fire in the Mind of Men, Origin, Origins of the Revolutionary Faith, uh, writes, um, uh, no, in this book he identifies um, Buonarroti as the apostle of a conspiracy that links the French Revolution with the communist revolutions in Eastern Europe and Asia. Yeah. And then things on rise that, uh, um, that, that there is a, a, a revolutionary tradition, uh, the history of an elite, a final line of apostolic su succession from Bonarotti, from, from the Illuminati to to Lenin. So you see the the uh, the history that there is a, a something like uh, something similar to, to to the Catholic Church because in the Catholic Church we we have a real yes. apostolic apostolic section from Saint Peter's to 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 our for for for, for the bishops uh, contemporary. Mm -hmm. But there is also in the in this secret society a, a an attempt to to reproduce the the a, a counter church uh, an anti church based on the same principles. So one of the so so we know for example that the Catholic Church as a doctrine has his sacraments or rites. And has uh, his own uh, succession, and mm -hmm. also in the secret society, there is a doctrine, there are rights, there is a succession. Hold that thought right there, Professor Roberto Di Matteo is our guest. We're talking about his book, uh, The Paths of Evil, Conspiracies, Plots, and Secret Societies, which, by the way, we're going to be linking to in the show notes, but you can find it at sophieinstitute.com. But I want to come back on the other side of the break and talk about your article, uh, Professor Dimite, The Church and Freemasonry, The Secret February 16 Meeting in Milan. Uh, very interesting because to the point you just made, the Grand Master BC himself made this point. Freemasons, they are competitors to the Catholic Church. They are competing for dominance in religion and philosophy. And it is, in fact, tied to communism. I agree. More on that is coming up right after this break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to link to everything in the show notes, but we'll be right back with more of A Catholic Take. Share us with a friend. Did you know that an unwanted car or truck can make a great gift? 
When the time comes to purchase a new one, consider donating your old car or truck to the Station of the Cross. We have a quick and simple way for you to get rid of your unwanted vehicle while supporting the solid Catholic programming you love listening to on your radio, online, and through your mobile devices. Whether they run or not, we accept cars, trucks, RVs, boats, and motorcycles. It's a great opportunity for you to give more than you might normally be able to. At the same time, you'll be clearing out space in your garage or driveway, ridding yourself of an unwanted vehicle. Just visit us online at thestationofthecross.com or call 1-866-628-CARS, 1-866-628-2277. May God bless you for your generosity in support of Catholic Radio. The Catholic Current, bringing Christ to the world and the world to Christ. What kind of resistance are you getting in the social media forum? Have you been accused of misinformation, hate speech, thought crimes of any kind? Yes, yes, all of the above. We have been listed on the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center's list of hate groups, which, you know, these days, frankly, is a badge of honor. Any group that's doing work in this area that hasn't received that designation might want to ask if they're being affected. Um, <laughs> Hear a powerful sermon you need to share with a loved one? Maybe there's a guest, prayer, or teaching segment that deserves another listen. You can listen to any of our network-produced programs at your convenience by finding us wherever you enjoy podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, and the free iCatholic Radio app. Be uplifted in your faith. Listen today at thestationofthecross.com or on your favorite podcasting platform. Be to Jesus Christ, welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. It's great to be on with you. Praise be to God. At the top of the hour, we say goodbye to the radio audience. We're going to stay live on the video feed for the after show. And I want to tell you about my time yesterday at the press conference for the Lepanto Institute and the Population Research Institute. Uh, they have uh, a report out. We're going to link to it in the show notes. We did the live video stream from that. We streamed the entire conference for you so you can see the evidence the receipts against the catholic relief services and what they've been complicit in uh purporting abortion and uh you know masturbation contraception all kinds of perversities they have partnered with groups that are that are conducting these 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 evils every single day in, in Africa and beyond. You can get the receipts, the details, the accusations, the allegations, all of that, but I'll share some of that in the after show. We're having a conversation right now with Professor Roberto Di Matei about his book, The Paths of Evil, Conspiracies, Plots, and Secret Societies by sophiainstitute.com. But he also has an article from Marate Celi, The Church and Freemasonry, The Secret February 16 Meeting in Milan. Uh, Professor DiMatteo, welcome back to the, the show. Thank you again for your time today. In your article, you point out, and again, we're going to be linking to this, you point out how the Grand Master BC of the uh, Grand, the Grand Orient uh, Lodge of Italy, he basically makes the same point that you made before the break in that the Freemason, which, by the way, for transparency, I was a third-degree Master Mason before becoming Catholic. My father is 32nd-degree Scottish Rite. So I am familiar with the secret rites and liturgies of Freemasonry. I've spoken about it often on my radio show. But uh, BC here, he points out that, in fact, Freemasonry was a competitor, is a competitor to the Catholic Church. And um, and it seems strange to me, and I want to get your take on this, Professor Dimite. Why, when the Catholic Church has so clearly taught that there are big problems with secret societies, that they have been at war with the Catholic Church now for centuries, and we get to be members of them, why in the world with high, would high-ranking uh, prelates from the Vatican be in dialogue with them? What is the goal? What do they hope to accomplish? Yes, um, this is the, the, the problem, because... Uh, because uh, the the great master BZ, as you said, um, uh, make uh, made a, a, a strong speech um, in, with the exaltation of the the um, Freemasonry and opening uh, 
the, 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 the door to the Catholic uh, Church. But in uh, this, in uh, his uh, speech, uh, he has uh, criticized um, the Catholic Church, uh, which has seen a Freemasonry as a potential competitor in the spiritualization and the elevation of, of, of a man. But um, forgetting, uh, busy to say that uh, um, if uh, the Catholic Church uh, has condemned the Freemasonry, it is because Freemasonry has opposed, fought, uh, misrepresented the, the Church over the past uh, three uh, ch- uh, centuries. And uh, uh, and the, so the the problem, the real problem, was not the 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 position of, of uh, uh, the great master Busy, which is uh, coherent with uh, his uh, um, anti-Catholic uh, view. But the problem it is that in this meeting, uh, which uh, happened the, the 16th of um, February the last month. Um, the, this this meeting was uh, in uh, in uh, Milan and uh, was opened by the Archbishop uh, of Milan, Mario Mario Delpini, uh, who gave the opening address, and um, and the Cardinal Coco Palmerio, uh, an important Cardinal, former president of the Pontifical Council for Legislative Text. He gave the the, the, the closing uh, uh, address, uh, uh, and so um, so this is uh, the, this is uh, the problem, Be- because also recently in a, a um, in a document of the Congregation um, of the the, the Faith, um, Freemas- Freemasonry was condemned, so it, it was a. a Quite a good uh, do- document, uh, but uh, but nevertheless, uh, this dialogue uh, continues. Why this? Because I think that since uh, the time of Vatican II, there is a, an attitude within the Catholic Church. This is uh, um, the. Uh, the uh, idea that there are no more enemies, uh, so the uh, antagonism uh, between uh, the church, the Catholic Church, and the, the world uh, is uh, finished. Uh, there is no more that uh, militant uh, spirit, which was a characteristic for centuries, for um, many centuries of the Catholic of the Catholic. Church. And there is the idea that it is possible uh, to find an agreement with the modern world, which in, which in fact is um, completely against the Catholic Church, because, because of all the, uh, the doctrine, the ideology, the atmosphere of the world uh, in which we are, we are immersed, it is completely antithetic to the uh, doctrine uh, and to the principles of uh, of the Catholic Church, and uh, according to the magisterium of the Church, the uh, among the, the the different uh, secret societies, the the mother sect, um, permanent uh, personification of a revolution. This is the the a definition around which all of the others are organized as a simple auxiliary forces. Well, the, the, the mother sect is Freemasonry. Mm. And this is revealed clearly from the pontifical documents that have repeatedly condemned it, the Freemasonry, over the centuries. The first Papal condemnation of Freemasonry dates to the apostolic letter in the Eminenti of Clement XI in 1738, a, a, a document which ordered the bishops to proceed against the Masons as persons suspected of heresy. And from then, so uh, 1738 to uh, to, to, to our time, uh, the condemnations of, of Freemasonry followed uninterrupted. Uh, but 
uh, but at, at the same time, in the last uh, um, 20, 30, 40 years, there were um, many meetings um, among um, Catholic uh, representatives uh, and uh, ex exponents of the Freemasonry um, in search of uh, an impossible um, collaboration because there is no um, there, there, there is no a, a, a bad uh, atheistic and anti-clerical Freemasonry and a good religious and spiritualist Freemasonry as um, many people uh, uh, believe. Mm. No, there are people uh, who make the distinction between the Latin, which is uh, the left wing, and the Anglo-American uh, Freemasonry, which would be the right wing. You know, the most. But in reality, no lodges, uh, the first degrees are overlaid with the Masonic high degree systems, uh, which are very anti-Catholic. Professor Roberto Di Matteo, I'm grateful for your time today. Thank you very much for, for being on the show with us. Uh, we're going to link to your Thank book you. and your article, The Paths of Evil, Conspiracies, Plots, and Secret Societies by SophiaInstitute.com. Check out the show notes today over at the stationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. Let's pray for the total conversion of those Freemasons. That's what we ought to be doing. Professor Di Matteo, God bless you and God love you. Tomorrow on the program, Mike Koeniger fills in for me and uh, Michael Beerlander, Fatima Farm, and Michael Hitchborn are on the show tomorrow. Join us there. We'll be in the after show next. God love you. So what did you think of today's show? Let's discuss that right now in the after show. Your take on the aftertake. Comment. Interact live with me and the team. All you need to do is search for one of our live video feeds on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, LinkedIn, and elsewhere. Simply search for The Station of the Cross, Joe McLean, or A Catholic Take. I'm looking forward to seeing you and interacting with you directly. It all starts right now. It's The After Show. And we are back. Welcome to The After Show, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Praise be to God. Hey, did you check out the live video stream we did yesterday from... Um, from the press conference for the Catholic Relief Services. Uh, producer, J I almost called you Professor Jake. I should have. Maybe You're someday. wearing t tweed with a, tw you know, smoking. <laughs> Maybe I should have called you Professor, someday. Professor Jake. Would you put the, um, would you put the link to this live video feed in the show notes today? I'd be grateful to. Yep. So yeah, the Catholic Relief Services did, uh, did some bad stuff. And the report with the receipts is out now. You can find the entire presentation, but I also um, I also sat down with Stephen Mosier. I sat down with Michael Hitchborn, and I also sat down with uh, Mr. Rob Gasper from Lepanto, and um, I had some one-on-one -on -one interviews with them. I'm going to be editing that content up for you next week when I get back into the home studio, and I can uh, I can do that. But here's the thing, and there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be. Um, they're going to push back. They're not going to believe it. And, and I find this personally true. There's a lot of people who just simply don't want to believe that an organization like CRS could be doing anything wrong. So they just turn the, turn the cheek. They're not going to look at this information. They're not going to, they're not even going to peruse the evidence or the allegations. They're just going to dismiss it. Never even give it a consideration. There's step one. Step two is the, they might say, well, they might have done those things. They might have part partnered with organizations, but that's the organizations. CRS didn't contribute to, to uh, teaching masturbation. Um, CRS didn't contribute to abortion, you know, forcing girls to go get abortions or taking girls, referring girls to get abortions. CRS didn't get pass out condoms. It was those other organizations that they partnered with. And here's the kicker in all of this. You know, there's a summary, there's an executive summary that, you know, details all this. But here's the bottom line is CRS got paid a billion with a B, a billion dollars to go and do their work in Africa, these African countries from the United States government. Tax dollars, my tax dollars, Professor Jake's tax dollars, and maybe some of your tax dollars went to give money to the CRS, this money. Then CRS 
chose the partners that they chose. CRS chose them. They picked these partners who over by overwhelming evidence went and fully full on hardcore went after a, uh, getting girls to embrace abortion, teaching contraception uh, to the point where they even had uh, like wooden phallics. And then they would, you know, teach everybody how to put a condom on pass buck, uh, you know, box loads of condoms out, pass out. They had manuals, pamphlets that taught uh, all kinds of per sexual perversities to these people, to these Africans. And this on a continent where the bishops recently said no to Fiduci Supicons. Let that sink in a little bit. So does it cost a billion dollars to do what they do? And if not, then what's the rest of that money go to? Well, it goes to their executive staff. There are big salaries, you know, um, they get paid a lot of money to support abortion and all manner of sexual perversity big, huge dollars. But Joe, you're just, okay, these are just rumors online. This No, th they hired investigators to go onto the ground to personally interview the, the people involved in these pro projects. They have video and they have audio. Plus they have all of the, the they actually have copies of the the actual documentation, the actual manuals that the teams are using to to actually manage the projects on the ground in Africa. Why do they, and fertility rates are dropping like flies over there. Why is that? Why? why? What, what do they have against the Africans that they want to make sure they can no longer have babies? Why is that? Ask yourself that question because it's an important question. And if, but hold on, Joe, all they're really trying to do, all they're really trying to do is prevent the spread of AIDS, Joe. These are sexual diseases that are rampant there. We're just trying to spread, you stop that. Okay, well, fine, fair enough. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good cause to want to reduce the spread of sexual uh, transmitted diseases. I, I'm on board with that. But why don't teach abstinence? In fact, according to the research, that is verboten. It is not allowed according to the the rules of receiving a billion dollars with a B of federal do uh, dollars. It is not allowed to teach abstinence. You must teach contraception. You must teach abortion. You must also teach masturbation. Let me ask you a question. If the goal is to stop, if the goal is to stop uh, the spread of sexually transmitted diseases, why again teach masturbation? Why is that? That's a thread that needs pulled on right there. That is a... Uh, that is a very interesting issue, isn't it? If you're really un do, trying to do something good and you're just, you know, we're trying to mitigate the evil here, we're just, you know, we're just the lesser of two evils, whatever argument that uh, your friends, your family, your pastor, whomever is going to bring up, you, your, bit, your bishop who's going to ignore this and not read this uh, re information, which, by the way, they sent detailed reports to all of America's bishops, to the African bishops, and, and they're trying to send them to elsewhere as well most of which probably won't even read it. It's bad news. It's bad news. Anyway, um, but that is a little bit of my story from yesterday. It was a, it was a really, it was a really eye-opening moment. You can watch the entire press conference on the live video feed that I, I had yesterday on the YouTube channel. I, Jake, where else did we put that? I think we streamed it pretty much everywhere. Rumble, okay. Facebook, Twitter, Wherever better Catholic content is sold. I don't know. <laughs> um, we, had, we streamed uh, pretty much every platform we streamed the show. So should be able, right. to, should be able to find it. If you, know, if you know where to find this show live in the mornings, just check out yeah. that, that channel where you find it, and you should see the live, uh, the ACT special report on uh, Lepanto Institute. All right. The, uh, Catholic Relief Services. All right. Praise be to God. I'll, I'll, Thanks I'll, for doing I'll, that. I'll link a few different uh, platforms in the in the uh, show notes so you can watch it where you prefer. I am going to gamble right now by pulling up the live video feed on YouTube so I can see the chat box. Uh, I'm afraid to do it too much because I'm on Starlink and Starlink is a satellite thing. And you can, you can see out the, this is all hundred percent green screen. I'm actually still in Houston, Texas, and I just green screened everything, but I'm teasing. Actually, I'm still in Shenandoah Valley, <laughs> but beyond that fog over there is the Shenandoah Valley. And the Blue, Blue Ridge mountains are right over there. It's quite lovely. I'm told. I'm told that it's beautiful here. I'm told that this is an amazingly beautiful place. I wouldn't know because I can't see 
um, I can only see the fog, which means the satellite is probably not getting its optimal performance, which I'm a little nervous about adding any extra windows. I didn't want to upset the apple cart, but hey, the show is over and I'm not on tomorrow. Mike Koeniger is, so I don't have to worry about it. Hey, John, yo, yo to you, John. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Jack tried Jack Burton tweeting to Mike K over on the telegram. Uh, T storm. I see you there. Praise be to God. Good morning to you. Carrie, Karen, Andy Bashaw, Karen, Andy Bashaw. Good morning to you. Laura L is on the team. Glad to see it. Damon bond is flying today. Bond James bond. Um, that's a pretty cool name. Huh? Probably never ending jokes for that guy, whoever he is. <laughs> um, Jen Nugent. Good morning to you. Cindy K Eileen and Paul Yvonne, Nick, the Mike Mimi and uh, Troy Lockett. Good morning to you, Damon. James 16897. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Glad you guys are here today. Who's on Facebook and Rumble, Jake? We'll let you cover those. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm doing uh, double duty today. All right, what, what do we got? Who do we got? They put me on screen so people can see me talking because that's what they really care about. <laughs> we've got uh, on Facebook, we've got Gio Nabara. Good morning. Uh, Rebecca, good morning to you. Lori, good morning. Uh, yeah, Junior Barra says unbelievable about the the uh, flying illegals into the into the rest of the country. Unbelievable, total conspiracy yeah. theory. Yeah, right. That's can't believe it. Uh, Mimi, good morning to you, Mimi. Greetings from the heart of the Texas Hill Country. Yes, indeed. I still I still have yet to get to the proper Hill Country. I've been to Texas a couple times, but but not the Hill Country yet. <laughs> uh, Patty, good morning to you. Don Paddock, good morning. Jane, good morning. Yeah, treasonous, exactly. And uh, who else? I thought I thought I saw someone, a couple other people on there. Maybe not. Oh, Don Franco. Don Franco. Don morning. Franco. Yes. Good morning to you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yes, indeed. Hey, Miriam Barnabas. Good morning to you. Glad you're here. Liz Fench. Helen. Good morning to you. Loki is here. Frank Rangel. Aitna Murphy. John Knights. Uh, Knight. Knight. Not. Not. It's not plural. Knight of the Immaculata. Good morning to you, Yvonne. Donna, good morning to you. Praise be to God. Glad you're on the team today. Caleb, the mechanic is here. Maria Lupini, good morning and welcome back. I'm glad you're back. Praise be to Jesus. Um, Patrick, good morning to you. Said so Years ago, I saw a painting of Clinton with two mouths talking out of both sides of his mouth. This is the perfect description of the Catholic hierarchy today. They kind of want their cake and eat it too, don't they? Um, let's see here, scrolling backwards. Uh, Evelyn, good morning to you. Uh, got that one right. In order to that, Evelyn. <laughs> uh, Gregory, good morning to you. Glad you were listening today. Thanks for doing it. Really appreciate you doing it. A, the letter A is on the team today. Um, J has not been back in a while, but DT is here. So we got at least three letters covered today. DT and A are on the team. I'm glad they're here. KSB, uh, there's, there's, there's six where, where six letters are covered. KSB, KSB DT, yeah. and A, all on the team today. Where's, K, where's KSW? Is, is he here today? Uh, or she? I'm not sure. I can't. I can't remember. I, I just have KSB. Sorry. Okay, Carol. So we have KSB and KSW on the team usually. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Colored pencils. Christine Dion. Good morning to you. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Praise be to God. Um, magnificent, or no, rather, Magnificat Scriptorium. What up, fellas? <laughs> what up? It's, it's kind of hilarious. What a yeah. contrast. I'm sitting here trying to, you know, stumble through the Latin pronunciation only to get, what up, fellas? <laughs> that's so hilarious. That's like that's like listening to country music while rapping. You know what I'm saying? It's like, woo, man, contrast of, of worlds. Oh, man. Ah, uh, good morning to you. It's yeah. I, I'm not at all surprised, Rudy, that that is you. That's, uh, that's <laughs> not at all surprised. Anyway, <laughs> what happened to Interregnum? Uh, Interreg. Yeah, he can't make up his mind. You know. Did you lose your He's password, just... Rudy? Um, Loki. Loki says, "Can you guys post the show notes link in the daily description?" It's the station of the cross.com forward slash ACT, but I'm sure Jake can throw it in there. Well, the link, the link is in the description. Um, you just have to, when you get to that, when you click on that link, the station of the cross.com forward slash ACT, click on that. There's a little menu at the top and it says show notes and you just click on that and it jumps right back, right down to the section. I can't really link directly to, you know, the show note post because 
you know, I haven't posted them yet. <laughs> I post them in the after show usually. So, I'm, in fact, I'm really I'm working on today's right right as we speak. Um, did you want mm. me to mention folks on Rumble, Joe? Yes, please. Okay, we've got uh, James sixteen eight nine seven. Good morning and God bless. I am Sci Fi Mike. Good morning, Casey Tart. Bonjour. Good morning. To le monde. I think I, my French is terrible. Uh, <laughs> at least the pronunciation. Good morning, Casey. Uh, Lynn Pine. Good morning, Doug nine nine nine. Good morning, and Nick the Mike is here. Hola, Nick the Mike. Nick the Mike is on the team. Uh, Karen Andy Bashaw says um, she's uh, hanging out on Telegram this morning. Praise be to God. We're glad you're doing it. Cindy K says James O'Keefe posted similar video Catholic Charities involvement with illegal aliens in San Diego. Yes, I, I remember. So did Infowars, by the way. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's the good times we live in right now. Um, Damon is triggering me though. He's goading me. Damon is. He's. You got to be careful, Damon. You poke the bear. You know what I'm saying? He he posted on Telegram. Damon says, "Country road." Hmm. Almost heaven. West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountains. Shenandoah River. Life is old there. Older than the tree. I can't sing. I can't do it. I can't will, do will it. Will it help if I beatbox while you sing that, Joe? Yes. Okay. If you do it. If you beatbox, I will. <laughs> I will. I will lay down. I will spit. I will spit it. How do they say it? Well, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna need mag Magnificat Scriptorium to uh, to help us yeah, exactly. spit the lyric. How do we how do we spit the lyric, Magnificat? That's your that's your part of the equation. Yeah, Robert no, Stevenson, you. good morning to you. Come, Lord Jesus, yea and amen. <laughs> uh, uh, Magnificat says I'm gonna be launching the pipe uh, the the pipe dream YouTube channel about book book binding. Is it going to be called the Pipe Dream? Because I would expect a channel called Pipe Dream to be about pipes. Right. Maybe you should call it the Binding Authority. Ooh. And every, like, when, and like, we're, like, it's ASMR, and you're like, it's just a top down where you're buying, you're like taking an old, ratty looking antique book and you're putting it on like a green desktop table mat thing. And you got like, you got the rubber gloves on and you are just carefully pulling it apart and you're going through the process while you're also talking to us in a deep, you know, melodic, soothing voice about the binding authority of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. As, as we see that, you know, that would be, that'd be base, no cap, as the kids say, uh, they'd be lit. Uh, I don't know. I, I, that's the extent of my of my hip language dictionary. I need like a I actually need like a hip language dictionary. Jake, can you share yours with me? They issue them I'll, now. I'll put one together. We'll we'll link it in the show notes. Okay. We'll, we'll have it okay. on the well, the ACT landing page. The ACT <laughs> ACT. Uh, we'll we'll have a whole list of definitions. We can define all our our uh, <laughs> all the true. catchphrases, <laughs> all, all the terms we use. Uh, so we need a dictionary. The ACT dictionary. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. My oh man! Was Someone was trying to call in. I don't know if they expected to call into the after show or what. I didn't. They probably the, want to do the sing along. I didn't, I didn't recognize the number. Time. So I didn't answer. They that were one. like, "Let's do this thing." Country road. I don't want to get scammed. Take me home to the place I belong. Uh, anyway, um, so, uh, Magnificat says, "I say pipe dream because I know I don't have the bandwidth to make it happen." Lol. I'm just gonna try. It. What, bro? Get started. Yeah. Done is better than perfect. Do it and see. Done happens. is better than perfect. I, I love. Just Thank get started. I just want to say do, do, right want, now. Create the channel right now while you're watching this channel. I want to say anyway. hi to Patty B because Patty B hasn't said anything the whole show and just chimed in to say flat when we started <laughs> singing. <laughs> <laughs> no way, Patty. Uh, what I definitely wasn't about? purposely singing flat in mm -hmm. harmony with Joe. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> but thank you. Good morning, mm -hmm. Patty. <laughs> mm -hmm. We should do a karaoke show in which the audience gets to choose the genre and the accent. Oh, boy. And the song. Okay. So they can choose a song, but a different genre with mm -hmm. a different accent. Yeah, so sing. So you have to sing like, you know, Jolene, but as uh, <laughs> as like a British New Wave song. 
I bet that'd be a cool. By the cover. way, while you were away, per, uh, Professor Jake. Yes, Professor. Jake. While while you were uh, off do, doing zoology in the Canadian Rockies, yes. or I don't know what it is you do actually, but whatever it is I, you were doing. Often I don't either, so that's fine. Uh, what happens in the Canadian Rockies, I'm told, stays in the Canadian Rockies, but nonetheless, ir regardless uh, of it all, despite the fact, um. I was going to say, oh, we had a very interesting, if you buy it, Jake will eat it um, I heard conversation. A little birdie you informed away. me that plans, <laughs> plans were being made on my behalf in my absence. Plans plans were hatched, <laughs> let's just say, of uh, if it's, you so, buy it. Sounds like what, I, what, what, I, what I'm supposed to eat might have hatched as well. Here's, hmm, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Do they hatch? No, they don't hatch. I don't know. No, no. But although that is interesting, you've, you've piqued my curiosity <laughs> on that one. <laughs> what can we get that hatches? Alligator <laughs> eggs, snake eggs, snake eggs. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting one of the first things that people are going to want me to eat is like one of those century eggs or something like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is what we did discuss is allowed on Fridays in Lent. Oh, okay. If um, that helps, if that helps you. Muskrat? Capybara? That capybara is gator? it. Good job. I don't have I mean, any buttons I'd, to I'd push to make noises, gator. so I can't I can't go ding 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 ding. But you know, hey, capybara, yeah. So uh Damon, I think, is calling in uh and Mateus are calling in connections from deep South America to find us a capybara to import into the United States. All right. I'll try capybara. To send to send up to the Buffalo studio so that oh. we can have a if you if you send it, Jake will eat it episode. I, I will try horse some eggs. Horse uh, eggs? I, I'm not. Gonna... I don't know that horses <laughs> lay eggs, Caleb the mechanic. But hey, listen, I'm not eating anything. anything is possible in today's educational system. Okay, horses could identify as chickens if they so choose, and their preferred pronouns are. No, I was going to say quack, but that wouldn't be. <laughs> it'd be cluck. It'd be cluck. <laughs> yes, it wouldn't be quack. It'd be a duck. But who am I to judge? You know what I'm saying? Hey, Carl. Birds. Carl says Appalachians are the root of American bluegrass. Go, Joe. Thank you. Unlike Patty, who doesn't appreciate my dulcet tones. Thank you, Carl Thomas. I do appreciate that. Ah, oh, let's see here. Capybara is delicious. Colin, you have had capybara. Ooh, serious? Are you being I'm, serious? I'm, he says chupacabra is delicious. Oh, chupacabra. Oh, okay. Chupacabra. The the ghost oh. dog. The, the, the secret uh, apocalyptic um, zombie dog. Is that what we're talking about? The, the uh, chupacabra? I thought that was it, what South American magicians say. What? Chupacabra? Chupacabra cadabra. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Chupacabra is a dog, bro. It's a, it's a mysterious. Mm -hmm. It's like Bigfoot. You, you only get more mystery out of the it's, deal. You never a, get... You never get to bottom the bottom line answers. The you only get the cobra is probably a coyote with mange. <laughs> but, I don't know. By the way, who am I to say? Conspiracy theories get proven right every other day. Speaking nowadays. Speaking of so. conspiracy theories and dogs, so the <laughs> okay. whole Tasmanian uh, tiger thing has that been busted? Are, do they still exist? There's there's there seems to be Tasmanian tiger. Turns out the Tasmanian, it's called the Tasmanian tiger, right? It's the dog with the, with the, with this tiger stripes on its rear. That was when it's been extinct now. Oh, for... I vaguely know what you're talking about, but I don't remember the details. So turns out that it's still alive. It's not extinct. According to the conspiracy, it is simply hmm. the house dog of Bigfoot. So <laughs> find one, you get both. It's a two for I, one I, special. I knew it was going somewhere. It's a two for one special. Somewhere. Yeah. The Tasmanian devil. Thank you. Yes. The Tasmanian devil. Eric JMJ is on the team. Good morning to you. Uh, uh, did Jake have Rocky Mountain oysters when he was in Alberta? Probably. What else does one do in the... the There's uh, nothing else to eat in the Rocky Mountains. Rocky honestly. Mountains, but Rocky... Ma yeah. We did talk about Rocky Mountain oysters, if I remember correctly. and you, But I, if I also remember correctly... Professor Jake, you said that you like them, or you ate them, or you would. I don't think I've ever had Rocky Mountain oysters, but I I would try one. They're a, they're a regional delicacy. Sometimes that's for a good reason. Sometimes mm -hmm. for, that's for a bad reason. But I'd try them. And now you all know what I have to deal with. Okay, so pff, from that from the mouths of babes, as they say, I'll try them. Uh, that's gross. That's disgusting. <laughs> and uh, no, no, thank you. Let's, Gotta pass. Gotta use every Gotta part pass. of the buffalo. 
Uh, not that part. <laughs> Maybe that part will be used as a fire starter. I mean, I can find another, another use. It ain't going to be for my meal. That's for <laughs> sure. Uh, Karen says, funny story. I was telling hubby about the sausage you were talking about. Didn't mention capybara, just exotic meats. And he said, what? Like capybara? <laughs> yes, that's good. There you go. I still have venison sausage in the fr in the fridge over there from my stop at Bucky's. Glory yes. be to God. Oh, wait a minute. I wasn't supposed to say that out loud. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. Keep that just just be just between us. Don't don't mention that to my wife. Um. Anyway. Uh, I'm teasing. Of course, it's one of the longest ongoing jokes I have on Facebook is, is teasing my wife about stopping at Bucky's. <laughs> I, I take, I have a, I have a history. It goes back now, probably 15 years, at least. Uh, every time I stop at Bucky's, I take a conspiratorial picture in front of the Bucky's sign where I'm looking like, I'm looking over my shoulder like someone's following me. Like I'm hiding, like I'm, like I'm up to no good. Like I've done something wrong and I know it. And uh, the first time I did it, because that's my sense of humor, first time I did it, I put it on Facebook and I took this, you know, this conspiratorial looking picture of myself in front of the sign. I put it on Facebook and I, I, I said, if my wife should happen to ask you, I was never here. Keep this just between us. And I tagged my wife in the post. And all of my wife's friends were like, you're so mean, Joe. He's, Michelle is such a sweet lady. She's such a sweet person. Why would you do this to her? <laughs> I'm just like, 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 she's tagged. It's a joke, people. It's a joke. Like they were like, you're <laughs> your wife is so sweet. She deserves better than you. I'm like, that's well, that's true. That's that much is true. I will. I'll grant that one. I'll concede the point, but nonetheless. But so I've been doing it ever since. Ever since I. I don't know what, why my camera just shut off. Oh, it's because I hit the I fade that, to black button. Earlier. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's what FTB stands for on the A10 Mini Pro. It means fade to black. Who knew? I guess I do now. Um, uh, glory be to God. Deborah Saints, good morning to you. Glad you're on the team today. European wild boar is extremely delicious, says Carl Thomas. I'd love to try it. Carl, yeah. Carl also says Rocky Mountain oysters are delicious if prepared correctly. See, that's what I have heard. That, well, Carl, it was time. good to know you, Carl. Yeah. I hate to see you go, but golly gee whiz. I mean, I'm not eating no Rocky Mountain oysters. I don't care how delicious you tell me they are. That's gross. That's just disgusting. Okay. Have you I'm ever eaten horse, it. Joe? Uh, no, but I would. I'd eat a horse. I've, 100%. I, I've never eaten. I, I don't like the idea of eating them. They're just... To me, they're a level above, you know, cattle and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I would try it if it was offered to me. You know, I know the French. Well, I like mean, I, I no doubt that a, the backstrap of a horse, man, that's like going to be the. It's going to be probably very good. It's going to taste great, and mm -hmm. you're going to get a. You're going to get a lot of it. Yeah, uh, horses are big. The Confederate Army, since I'm in the Valley of the Shannon, Shenandoah, you know. Stonewall Jackson. Oh, By the way, can I go on a Stonewall Jackson rant I here? To hear you. Uh, Stonewall Jackson. I should get my son John Paul to come over here and and uh, and chat up the, uh, the 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 recent unpleasantness, the war between the states. You know, Stonewall Jackson in the Shenandoah Valley, scaring the uh, the, the Army of the Potomac because he was such a uh, a stellar battlefield commander. Not perfect, but stellar. Anyway, um, before I go on that tangent, I'll say this. The, the Northern Army starved the Southerns. They starved them. They surrounded. They took control of the Mississippi. That was the Battle of Vicksburg and New Orleans. And they took control of the Mississippi. And they did an, uh, They basically put up a, a wall. Not like what we're, we're not doing that on the southern border. But uh, Abraham Lincoln put up a wall around the entire deep south. And then he starved them to death. And the army basically ended up eating all their horses. and uh, They couldn't carry artillery anymore. And after the horses were gone, there was nothing left to eat. So, yeah. Unity to the point of mass starvation. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm. Just ruminate on that for a moment. How ethical is that? Is that ethical? Is that a, is that, is that a just war? Just curious. But Joe, they... They they had slaves and they were mean to their slaves and they were ugly slaves. Yeah, that's bad. And they'd be judged for those those sins and those crimes. 100 percent. I'm on that team for sure. But is the answer to starve an entire 
nation of people or states of people, however you wish to see that, starve well, them. Joe, it's it's completely illegal to separate yourself <clears throat> from a government you don't like, especially Clearly. especially if the government you don't like separated themselves from a government. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, seventeen seventy. I'm sorry, you're breaking wait, up on me, Jake. If you could, are you saying? Wait, you're so, you're, you're you were just at the point. You, let me let me help you. I, we lost you at Boston Tea Party. Go ahead from there. Yeah. So it's yeah. Remember, it's yeah. You it's were legal. It's legal to say mm -hmm. we don't like mm -hmm. the way that the government back home is running mm -hmm. things. So mm -hmm. we're going to break ourselves off mm -hmm. and form our own nation. Mm -hmm. But it's illegal mm -hmm. to say mm -hmm. that uh, you, we don't like the way the government back up in Washington is doing things and we want to break off and form our own. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, whatever, Benedict Arnold. Whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. You were in New York. I got confused yeah. for a second. Yeah. <laughs> mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. You know, uh, let's go back to Jackson, uh, Stonewall Jackson from the Shenandoah Valley, which you can see is quite lovely behind me. Anyway, um, it's not that lovely because it's all foggy out. I can't see anything, but whatever. I'm not bitter. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bitter about it's that. the first time you've mentioned it that I've driven all this way to see fog, but whatever. Um, you know, it's interesting because he, he owned some slaves. He inherited some and, you know, he treated them so well that other slaves begged him to buy them so that they could also be treated well, caring for their needs, providing for them in healthcare and well-being, even up to the point of burying them properly. He had a reputation around town. In fact, uh, he set up uh, Sunday schools just for slave children so that they would be taught uh, the faith, mm -hmm. taught uh, the Bible. And then the white slave traders uh, tried to stop him and shut him down. And he's like, go ahead, try and stop me. Go ahead, see what happens. <laughs> and, then, and then they stopped. They stopped mm -hmm. trying to harass him because <laughs> he was Stonewall Jackson and he, he wasn't putting up with it. You know, uh, there are many things that, I'm sure that we were never taught in school about people like Robert E. Lee or Stonewall Jackson, Thomas Jefferson, and others. I'm sure, that in fact, what we were taught was these were all bad guys. These were all evil people, slave traders, slave owners, etc. And they were all, all bad people. They weren't perfect. They weren't saints. But I'm guaranteeing that if you looked hard enough into their lives, you might find you might find you learned something you didn't know before, and you might have a newfound respect for certain people that you didn't, you didn't have before. And if I, if I could recommend a book, Rebel Yell is, I would say, an amazing work that you could go through on the life of Stonewall Jackson. Um, I've also gone through biographies on Robert E. Lee. He, he, has, uh, he wrote extensively to his wife during the, during the war. You know, he, he wanted to see the, the slaves freed, but he also knew that they had to be taken care of. They had to, we had to help them acclimate to society as free people. You can't do what Grant did in, in Vicksburg, which was take Vicksburg, free all the slaves, and then say, bah, and then walk away, and then provide no order, no organization, nothing. They were in total chaos. Go there today. See the poverty that is still present today in Vicksburg. I've been there. I've seen it myself. Did we free them or did we further enslave them to poverty? That's a question. Did we help them by becoming uh, members of a free society? Did we assist them with that? Or did we just make it harder or, e or rather easier for them to, to remain in slavery? Therein lies some of the questions. Joe, you sound like an... an uh, you, you sound like Southern sympathizer. The lost Creole says I have a newfound respect for the complexities of the war between the States. It's not as straightforward as, uh, as we were taught in school. It's way more complex than that. Way more complex than that. And, uh, and when, when you have 600,000 casualties, 600,000 deaths, from, from bullet wounds to cannonballs to disease and famine. <clears throat> Shame on us for a country that does that. Amen. North or south. What were you going to say, Jake? Uh, I was going to say hi to KSW because they, they chimed in right at the end. KSW heard, heard we is on the you. team. <laughs> Glory be to God. Yeah. Amen. Caleb the Mechanic, Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee were noble men. I agree with you. We have to have a whole show just on that topic. Hey, tomorrow Mike Koeniger is on the team. Mike Vierlander and Michael Hitchborn. It's the Mikes all day tomorrow. We'll see you there. God love you.